أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما نافعا اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وارنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه ربي اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقه قولي السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته ولكم تو ذا ريفلكشنز اون ذا رسال اي نور باي بدء الزمان سعيد نورسي بودكاست سيريس ذس از مصطفى تنا You can listen to the episodes of this series wherever you listen to your podcasts or at the website www.reflections-rn.org. Inshallah, in this episode, we will continue reading the 15th word. This is a treatise in which Ustad Nursi uh, provides a somewhat lengthy uh, interpretation exegesis of the verse. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. وَلَقَدْ زَيَّنَّ السَّمَاءَ الدُّنْيَا بِمَصَابِيحَا وَجَعَلْنَاهَا رُجُومًا لِلشَّيَاطِينَ We have adorned the lowest heaven with lamps and made them missiles for stoning satans. He begins this treatise by saying, O oh, you, the school gentleman, whose mind is narrowed down by the spiritless matters of astronomy, intellect has descended to his eye, and who cannot fit the tremendous secret of this verse in his narrow mind? The firmament of this verse can be climbed with a ladder with, with seven steps. Come, we will climb together, and then each of these steps uh, are uh, an interpretation or a, a wisdom. In this verse, we read... Two of them, inshallah, in this episode, we will continue with the third one. And as a reminder, you can find rough translation of the text we are reading in the website that we mentioned as www.reflections-rn.org. So, the third step, inshallah. Semanın sükut ve sükuneti ve intizam ve ıttıradı ve vüsaat ve nuraniyeti gösterir ki, sekenesi zeminin sekenesi gibi değiller. Belki bütün ahalisi mutidirler. Ne emrolunsa onu işlerler. Müzaheme ve münakaşayı icap edecek bir sebep yoktur. Zira memleket geniş, fıtratları safi, kendileri masum, makamları sabittir. <gülüyor> The silence, tranquility, orderliness, regularity, vastness, and luminosity of the heavens show that it, its inhabitants are not like the inhabitants of the earth. So the earth, we are somewhat crowded here, right? You, um, especially in the spring as it is uh, where I am now, you go out and take a... You know, a handful of soil, or hands, uh, or you know, bow down and take a look at a you know, hand span of soil. You will see so many seeds sprouting, and they are going to be competing with each other. Some of them will surpass the others and and grow. The others will be left in the shade because the others grow faster than them. So there is this crowdedness, and uh, now they help each other too those who cannot grow you know further die and disintegrate and that turn that becomes nitrogen that's provided to the other so there is this mutual assistance cooperation that's also going on here and there is a regularity and orderliness in it right but here on earth everything is in a sense like jammed together when you look at the heavens the the the space there is so much space there and there is silence, therefore tranquility. Tranquility, despite so much happening, like imagine each star exploding. Um, how much noise that must make, but it doesn't travel beyond the uh, beyond the atmosphere of the stars because there isn't there isn't a medium that's going to convey the noise. And there is in you know, absolute silence, tranquility, orderliness here on Earth. 
there is you know silence tranquility orderliness regularity etc too but we human beings get involved and with our partial will and and limited choice we kind of ruin things and also you know, animals they do not have the kind of choice that we have but they do have a practical choice so there is a difference between the heavens and earth and this difference Ustad Nursi says indicates or shows that the inhabitants of the heavens are not like the inhabitants of the earth now in the previous two steps we established that there must be inhabitants in the heavens too but they it is not likely that they will be like the inhabitants of the earth in fact its entire population are obedient the entire population of the heavens the space are obedient so there must be life there too but of course this is an interpretation right based on this interpretation we can conclude that the possessors of life there are going to be all obedient unlike human beings and the jinn that are here on earth and that can uh, choose to be disobedient they do whatever they are commanded like angels there is no cause for confrontation and dispute because the land is vast they are that the the inhabitants innate natures uncorrupted natures the way they are created are pure they are innocent and their stations are stable now um one might think you know if human beings are the you know most honored of created beings why is there so much corruption and conflict etc here on earth there is a benefit and there is a wisdom and benefit to that too thanks to this um confrontation and thanks to the ability of human beings to choose between uh, good and bad evil and good there is a law of progress there is a law of improvement there is um the opportunity for improvement for human beings and that is the essence of uh, the wisdom that we we um attribute to the creation of the human beings we are created to know god now there are other creatures that know god such as the angels but the way that the angels know god is not like the way that human beings know god angels do not have partial choice they they comprehend what good is and what evil is but they do not have the capacity to choose evil over good human beings on the other hand have the capacity to choose evil over good and if a human being who has the capacity to choose evil over good chooses good and chooses to be obedient to his lord who is the source of all goodness then that is significantly more virtuous than the choice of the the um, or not even choice the act of the angel to be inclined to be attracted to good it is mechanical in the case of the angel it is mechanical in the case of the human being it is willful so there is a wisdom in what's happening here on this earth and it is tremendously valuable but when we look at the heavens we we see that it is vast silent tranquil orderly luminous and that gives us some signs some indication that that there is no cause for confrontation and dispute there because the land is vast the inhabitants uh, they they they are the inhabitants in that natures are pure they are innocent if they if they cannot choose evil over bad they cannot be evil right they are innocent however their stations are, are stable the stations of human beings are not stable they we go up and down god creates us in ahsen taqwin the best of creation right? the, the best form but then 
ثم رددناه أسفل السافلين. Then we, uh, because of our actions, because of our of our choices, he can cast us down all the way to the lowest of the law. But because of our choices, so we are not stable. We go up and down. We constantly move, and all of the, all of us need to aim, aspire to moving up, progressing, improving. Of course. Evet. Zeminde ezdad içtima etmiş. Eşrar ahyara karışmış. İçlerinde münakaşat başlamış. O sebepten ihtilafat ve ızdırabat düşmüş. Ve ondan imtihanat ve müsabakat teklif edilmiş. Ve ondan terakkiyat ve tedenniyat çıkmış. Şu hakikatin hikmeti şudur ki. Yes, the opposites have congregated on earth. Opposites have congregated on earth. Evil, good. They are together. Ugly, beautiful. They are together. True, false. They are together. You cannot always tell one from the other. Now, if you have the criterion, a clear criterion, and a, a pure intellect, a pure conscience, a pure heart, etc., etc., you can. But we become forgetful, our minds and intellects become blurred, we cannot see the full reality, complete reality in its fullness, in its completeness. Our hearts become contaminated and covered with rust because of our sins. Our inner sight becomes blurred, etc., etc. We cannot tell them sometimes, but we still try, right, that what what we are responsible for is sincerely trying, right? But they are together. They are mixed up, blended together here on this earth. The opposites have congregated on earth. Now, when I say blend, it doesn't mean that the good and the and the and the evil have entered into one another. No. They don't enter in one another, right? But they stand together. They they you can find them in the same place. The evil ones have blended with the good ones. Dispute has started among them. There is opposition, there is confrontation, conflict going on. Oppositions and sufferings have come out of this. Oppositions and sufferings have come out of this. Trials and competitions have been obligated. And from this have arisen progress and regress. What we talked about. Man is created in the best of best of forms, but then goes down to the lowest of the lowest. The wisdom in this reality is this. Now, Ustad Nursi is going to explain this in a, in a much better way than I tried. Beşer şecere-i hilkatin en son cüzü olan meyvesidir. Malumdur ki bir şeyin semeresi en uzak, en cemiyetli, en nazik. En, em- en ehemmiyetli cüz'üdür. İşte bunun için semere-i alem olan insan en cami, en bedi, en aciz, en zayıf ve en latif bir mucize-i kudret olduğundan beşi ve meskeni olan zemin asumana nispeten maddeten küçüklüğüyle ve hakaretiyle beraber manen ve sanaten bütün kainatın kalbi, merkezi, bütün mucizat-ı sanatın meşheri, sergisi ve bütün tecelliyat esmasının mazharı Noktayı mihrakiyesi ve nihayetsiz faaliyeti Rabbaniye'nin mahşeri ve makesi ve hadsiz hallakiyeti ilahiyenin hususan nebatat ve hayvanatın kesretli enva-ı sakiresinde cevvadane icadın medarı ve çarşısı ve pek geniş ahiret alemindeki alemlerindeki masnuatın küçük mikyaslı numunegahı Hemen sucat-ı ebediyenin süratle işleyen dezgahı, hemen hazır-ı semediyenin süratle değişen taklitgahı ve besatini, daim, besatini daimenin tomcuklarına süratle sümbüllenen dar ve muvakkat mezrası ve terbi- terbiyegahı olmuştur. Now this one sentence, one paragraph long sentence um, could be expanded to become a book. We will try, inshallah, we will try to understand as much as possible. I'm going to read from beginning to end once and then try to read again, uh, focusing on the uh, the details. 
here we have a beautiful description of what the human being is and what the earth is the human being is the fruit that comes as the last part of the tree of creation it is well known that the fruit of a thing is its most comprehensive most delicate and most significant part therefore because the human being who is the fruit of the realm is the most comprehensive the most peerless the most important the weakest and the subtlest miracle of power compared to the heavens despite its material smallness and lowliness the earth which is the human being's cradle and place of habitation has become from the point of view of metaphysics and artistry the heart and center of the entire cosmos the display house and exhibit of all miracles of artistry the locus of appearance and the focal point for all the manifestations of divine names the place of assembly and reflection for endless lordly activity the locus and the marketplace of boundless divine creativity and especially of the generous act of bringing into existence among the many small species of plants and animals the sampling place at a small scale for the artifacts of the vast realms of the hereafter the fast working loom of eternal tapestries the fast changing place of imitation for the perpetual sceneries and the narrow and co narrow and temporary yet fast blossoming field and place of nurturing for the tiny seeds of continual gardens so let's go back and try to read this with some more um, attention and and let's try to understand it the human being is the fruit that comes as the last part of the tree of creation so if you think of creation so there are there are two um we can think of two categories of things in existence one is the necessarily existent being god the other is all possible or contingent or created beings so we think of the entire creation all created beings everything that is existence other than god the human being has a special special place in this category as the most honored and it is the fruit fruit that comes as the last part of the tree of creation so what do we mean by fruit the fruit is the part of a tree that comes at the end of its uh, its process of maturation when the tree matures to its full size and in its life cycle to its the to the point where it can bear what it's meant to bear it bears its fruits so the fruit comes at the end after the seed after the trunk after the branches after the leaves the fruit contains the benefit of the tree you grow an apple tree to eat the apples you you know plant apple trees and after a few years if they don't uh, produce apples you say okay these are not producing apples you root them up and and you know put other trees there that's that are going to produce uh, benefit that is fruits the existence of the tree reaches its um its ultimate purpose with the bearing of the fruit the fruit also contains information that is needed to uh, for the tree to, to to reproduce if you want to reproduce this tree you need the fruit which contains the seed in it so the human beings are like this start nursery uses an analogy between the tree and the fruit and the creation and the human being what the fruit is to the tree start nursery says the human being is to the creation why we have talked about this before the wisdom the ultimate wisdom that we can understand in the creation is for the creator as all possessors of beauty majesty and perfection want to see and show that perfection and beauty the creator chose willed to show manifest his beauty and perfection and created the creation 
Now, there are two ways to see this. One is that he sees through his discerning sight. God is, right, basar. He, is, he has sight. We don't know the nature of the quiddity of that sight, but we know that he sees. He sees. And when he sees, he sees uh, his perfection and his beauty. The second way to see is to see through the sight of those who see and who can tell. Now, the angels can see, and God sees through the sight of angels. He, he sees the appreciation, the gratitude, gratitude etc of the angels the animals see god sees this the seeing of the animals and the appreciation gratitude of the animals which can be uh, perhaps identified in the pleasure that they receive from let's say what they eat right but in all of these cases as we just talked the there is one thing that's that's missing the angels cannot choose evil over good animals can tell evil over good or beautiful from ugly etc etc it is in in all of those cases it is a mechanical process but when the human being comes into the picture as well as the jinn it is a willful proce process the will and volition is in, in involved in the process and this takes the the the um category of seeing through the sight of those who see to one perhaps many levels up now it is complete now with the existence of the human being and with the seeing appreciation gratitude of the human being and exaltation and glorification of the human being creation reaches the ultimate point ultimate purpose of its existence it's mature it's bearing its fruits it is it is delivering benefit and other things that we can put into this uh, right the human being comes at the end everything has to be prepared everything was prepared in the creation right according to some calculations which may change later the the the cosmos or the, or the rather the visible universe that we see is about 14 point something billion years old and the history of humanity that we can see in this entire creation comes at the, at the very end so if this uh, whole thing is like like a day humanity comes at the last few minutes in existence so it comes at the end it comes after everything is matured and ready to sustain and support the human being and the human being also contains all the information that is contained in the entire creation in the sense of the manifestation of divine or reflections of divine names and attributes the human being is the locus of manifestation for all divine names and attributes that are manifest in the entire creation so the, the human being is a special thing in the creation it is well known that the fruit of a thing is its most comprehensive most delicate and most significant part so i suppose we understand this now that it is most comprehensive all the names most delicate because of that perfection that the delicacy comes with the perfection every like you, you cannot change a single thing in it without ruining the the whole thing everything is where it belongs to now everything is where it belongs to in the entire creation but in the case of the human being this has reached a level of delicacy and perfection and the most significant part of course as we said if you plant apple trees and they don't bear fruits let's say after five years however many years it is that the, the, the, the tree is supposed to bear fruits then you root them up and put other plants that is the purpose of the tree the apple is the purpose of the tree the fruit is the purpose of the tree so it is the most significant part therefore because the human being who is the fruit of the realm is the most comprehensive most peerless most important weakest and the subtlest miracle of power compared to the heavens despite its material smallness and lowliness 
the earth now what does the earth do we will go over several uh, things that the earth does but the earth hosts the human being because it hosts the most comprehensive the most peerless the most important the weakest the subtlest miracle of power which is the human being it can be compared to the heavens despite its smallness despite its lowliness imagine the universe that is as big as the distance that light can travel in 14 billion years and the earth that you know we can travel around in now in a couple of days i suppose with a with an airplane or if you think about the space stations uh, that they can travel around the world in in a couple of hours yet despite its smallness compared to the entire universe the earth is comparable to the entire universe why because it hosts the fruit it hosts the most comprehensive most delicate and most significant part of the tree of creation so because of this because of the human being the earth now what is the earth which is the human beings cradle and place of habitation cradle and place of habitation right god has prepared the earth as a cradle the way that you know when you expect a baby if you have the means you pro you you prepare a cradle you buy this little bed you put you know the, the mattress you put the clean nice looking nice smelling soft sheets in it you try to get everything ready so that when the baby comes home everything that the baby will need is provided the earth is prepared in that way for the human being oxygen check nutrition check water check gravity check light check heat check whatever everything that the human being needs check it is prepared so perfectly they uh, in several decades before now they made this experimentation somewhere in america uh, it might be in arizona where they um, created a, a habitat built a habitat a dome covered with glass it was sealed so that no air would come in no nothing would come in and no nothing would go out so it was supposed to be an experiment about whether the there could be a sustained existence in there with plants animals and human beings now there are habitats like this that they they you know make in little jars and clothes and you have a, uh, a maybe a shrimp a something like a, a water plant uh, you know other things and then the, because of the ecologic ecological cycle you know one produces carbon dioxide the, pro, the other produces oxygen etc uh, it keeps sustaining right but this one the, the dome you know failed after after a while now we unfortunately may be exhausting the resources of the earth and now as humanity we are thinking about like setting up uh, you know places of habitation on the moon on mars etc this effort the amount of um information that is needed in order to make something like that possible the amount of technology the amount of resources and energy and thought etc this all gives us a measure to understand the tremendousness of the earth being prepared as a cradle for the human being we are here and we have everything we need to the tiniest detail we even have everything for pleasure not only a survival and existence but pleasure we have colors we have you know changes in temperature we have the breeze we have you know um, opportunities for exercise we have different tastes different smells different uh, you know sensations it is prepared the way the way that you know parents loving who love their baby would prepare a cradle and place of habitation
has become from the point of view of metaphysics and artistry so because of all of this the earth has become from the point of view of metaphysics and artistry that is the meanings that are attributed to the earth the value that is given to the earth and the artistry that is put into the earth right it has become the heart and center of the entire cosmos it may not be the heart and center of the entire cosmos in terms of you know geometry perhaps we are not at the very center of the cosmos i'm not sure if uh, you know based on what we know of the universe whether we are there or not but metaphysically from the point of view of meaning and value we are at the center of we are in the heart of the entire cosmos now the earth because of these has become the display house and exhibit of all miracles of artistry now we said the wisdom that we can infer in the creation is uh, you know for the creator who has who possesses beauty and perfection to witness to see to to uh, behold his beauty and perfection in his own eyes and in the in this in his own sight and in the sight of uh, those who see now those who see in the way that the concept of seeing has reached its pinnacle are the human beings then everything that needs to be seen should be before the sight of human beings now there are things that are out there that we not we do not see in the invisible realm but but there have been human beings who have seen them too this is one of the wisdoms in the uh, prophetic ascension miraj of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he was shown everything he was shown things that no eye has ever seen or will see but he was shown if the hum the hum if humanity is the fruit of the tree of creation the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the fruit of the tree of humanity so it was shown to him but speaking generally for the regular human being everything that deserves to be seen needs to be in the sight of the human being then this earth will be you know crowded there will be a lot of things here it will be like a display house an exhibit of all miracles of artistry all miracles of creation if we look from the point of view of reality everything is everything in existence everything in creation is miraculous we because of uh, our heedlessness and you know because we become desensitized to wonders we think that you know the tree is natural the stars are natural the moon is natural the squirrel that is jumping from branch to branch is natural what does natural mean if it means that it is you know not worth giving a second thought it is it is not precious it is no, it does not require tremendous power to be in existence no no no nothing nothing is natural everything is miraculous miraculous in the sense that it leaves the human being and everything else incapacitated none of them none of us none of them have the capacity to bring into existence anything that is in the creation nothing that is in the creation has any power any capacity to bring anything into existence all power belongs to god everything is from god and in that sense everything is miraculous and this earth is filled with the varieties of all sorts of miracles of artistry then because the human being is in it this earth has become the locus of appearance and the focal point for all the manifestations of divine names locus of appearance the place where something appears the divine names appear in the creation they are manifest everywhere what does this mean we look at the tree 
standing firm with a you know thick trunk that holds all the branches the leaves the fruits up so that firmness is a manifestation of god's name al mateen we look at the tree in the winter it was a dry trunk of wood almost like dead there comes the spring and the sap moves into the into the wood and reaches all the way to the branches then through the branches to those little buds and those buds turn into leaves and life comes into the tree in that sense the tree is a locus of manifestation for the name al muhyi al hay and al muhyi and al qayyum the living the life giver the sustainer of life the tree needs nutrition it needs let's say nitrogen bacteria that are close to its roots in the soil that in turn benefit from the tree synthesize nitrogen from the air and they dump it into the soil and then with water it moves to the roots and the roots take that and move it all the way to the leaves and the leaves take it and use it to do certain things it is provided the tree needs sunlight in order to turn uh, the carbon carbon dioxide that is in the air into cells the light is provided the tree needs a certain temperature for this to happen temperature is provided provided provided provided in that sense the tree is a locus of appearance locus of manifestation for the name Arazak, the provider now the entire universe the entire cosmos is like a moving picture on which the divine names and attributes are manifest in their entire varieties each in its entire variety and all of that is manifest on the human being and all of that is manifest on earth or visible from earth for the human being to witness because as we said we are here to witness the beauty and perfection of our lord to witness it to appreciate it to show gratitude in return to glorify him to exalt him and to worship him the locus of appearance and the focal point for all the manifestations of divine names this is the focal point the place of assembly and reflection for endless lordly activity lordly activity the word that we are translating as Lord is Rabbani. Lord is Rab. It's God, right? But God, or an appellation that we are using to refer to God, a name that we are using to refer to God in relation to His being the Lord of the creation, everything in the in, in existence uh, in the creation. And this is not a you know stagnant. Uh, thing the creation is not like a picture that is painted once and hang on hung on the on the wall to stay there forever no the creation is a living creation it is constantly changing there is activity going on all the time and god as the lord is constantly in charge of this activity so when we look around we witness that activity the place of assembly and reflection for endless lordly activity wind blows and the and the clouds pass over the sky and the sky is constantly changing in appearance and there is activity going on there water is evaporating then it is condensing sometimes it's coming down as rain the rain falls to the ground and the the bacteria starts to uh, reproduce they 
produce a beautiful smell and then that bacteria synthesizes nitrogen nitrogen is sucked up by plants including the trees and then the plants start to grow sometimes they bear fruit sometimes they they uh, blossom and give us these beautiful flowers to be the the deer or the sheep or the rabbit whatever comes and eats that uh, some of that those plants and that turns into nutrition for their uh, bodies and and the the deer then walks and we watch it walking beautifully activity the sea you look at the the surface of the sea you think it is tranquil but if you look more carefully you see that there are all these waves rising and and ebbing and flowing and ebbing and flowing there is activity you look into the ocean you would think that it is just a mass of water but it is full of life teeming with life wherever you turn there is activity and all this activity are occasions that manifest different aspects of different manifestations of god's names and attributes and rub right is a name that that gathers all those names the place of assembly and reflection for endless lordly activity all that activity are you know joining together here on earth and also reflecting from the the heavens on earth when we look up and we see the the stars the stars reflect in our eyes the light of the sun the light of the stars the light of the moon everything is reflecting here on earth everything everything that is uh, worth seeing and should be seen for the creation to reach the pinnacle of the purpose of its existence now again there are things that we do not see then there are angels who see that too but there will be samples of those that are going to be seen by human beings too the locus and the marketplace of boundless divine creativity and especially the generous act of bringing into existence among the many small species of plants and animals wherever there is life the um, existence becomes universalized what does this mean think of a rock sitting on this the uh, you know, skirts of a hill it interacts with its environment right uh, you know the, it, it has a weight that it is putting on the earth that it is uh, sitting on perhaps there will be some moss coming and growing on it etc but it's limited its interaction is limited to you know within a certain square feet square meter of space now imagine a bee that is much smaller than the rock but the bee is alive the bee does not stay in one place it keeps moving and in order to sustain its existence it needs many things it is not just like the rock just sitting there now the rock also needs sustenance but the sustenance of the bee is through other things that are in the in the creation like the flowers like the pollen that's on the flowers the bee needs to go around and find the pollen now the pollen needs the flower the flower needs the plant the plant need, plant needs the earth the earth has various elements that the that need that need to be there for the flower to grow those elements were prepared cooked in the cauldron of some star at some point before the earth came into existence now the bee is related to the entire creation in this way so wherever there is life existence becomes universalized and this earth is teeming with life every spring billions billions of insects flies spiders and then you know more than billions a number that i cannot imagine of bacteria you know fungi so much life and each one of them are related to every one of them 
boundless divine creativity and especially the, the generous act of bringing into existence among the many small species of plants and animals the earth the earth is the locus of that activity and the marketplace marketplace i.e things are being put on display for purchasing what does purchasing mean well it can mean multiple levels of things for instance put a rabbit in a garden the rabbit is not going to eat every plant it will look around and it will you know, take some and leave some it will purchase some right it will go to the stalls of the garden and pull pick you know some of the fruits there and leave some others some of them it, it's not going to bother taking or the human being right the human being is also in a marketplace it picks things and then it leaves things now the rabbit is again mechanical it is given given a certain sense of smell and taste and you know appetite and it is drawn to certain plants what about the human beings we even change our tastes we even change our needs we can be drawn to ugly and evil stuff and we can be drawn to what is halal and tayyib what is permissible and good declared to be good by our lord but we need to know that we are in a marketplace and this earth is the marketplace so again because the human being is here on earth the earth has become the sampling place at a small scale for the artifacts of the vast realms of the hereafter the hereafter too it's the invisible realm from our point of view and whatever will be created there will be incomparably more perfect bigger everlasting more beautiful etc than here but but this earth has samplings of what is to come over there the sample does not give the full benefit of the real thing but it gives an idea about the real thing that is why when we are in paradise inshallah may god put all of us into paradise when we are in paradise we will eat these fruits from the trees that will you know bow down to us to give us the, the, those fruits and we will we will it will feel familiar but at the same time it will be different from anything that we have eaten and both of these have pleasures associated with them familiarity has a pleasure and surprise has a pleasure and this earth is also meant to encourage us encourage us toward that paradise which is the beauty of which rather the beauty of which is because of the beauty and perfection that is manifest on it in a way that is going to be more perfect than everything all those names and uh, and, and attributes of god that are beautiful and perfect are manifest on this earth so to encourage us toward that paradise and also to show us what is to come inshallah inshallah this earth is also filled with the samples of the artifacts of the vast realms of the hereafter and then it is the fast working loom of eternal tapestries fast working loom of eternal tapestries it is like so what happens in a loom you put the the, the uh the thread in it and you waft and etc you, you put the thread and then you create these images these sites the the motifs etc right the things that we do here on this earth and everything that is being done on this earth not by human beings but by animals by the clouds every scene and scenery that is being recorded that's being recorded and again in the paradise inshallah we will we will be shown them you'll be shown them, and we will remember with our you know beautiful believing friends we will remember the days that we were on this earth god knows how but you know we can't think of it as like watching movies maybe maybe and that's that will also give us this sense of uh, you know, pleasurable sense of familiarity and remembrance and shared experience fast working loom of eternal tapestries the fast changing place of imitation for perpetual sceneries again the, the you know it's, it's a similar notion in the way that 
um, and in the way that you, if you are shooting a movie, for instance, the movie of something that you have in your imagination, nobody has seen it before. You have it in your imagination, but you want to expose it to people, right? There is creativity involved in the process. You set up a scenery. You imitate what is in your Im imagination to show it to the people. It is not the real thing, but it gives an idea. What are the samples here of the hereafter? Or the uh, invisible realm, unseen realms? They are imitations of what is to come. They are not the real thing, but they are imitations, they are reflections, they are, sim they are similitudes of what is to, to come. And the narrow and temporary, yes, yet fast blossoming field and place of nurturing for the tiny seeds of continual gardens, continual gardens, paradise, the gardens of paradise, we sow here, inshallah, we will harvest there. The Prophet وسلم, said that the, the, the world is the cultivating field of the hereafter. Yet, this is the cultivating field of the hereafter. We are sowing the seeds, inshallah, we will harvest there. It is narrow, it is small, it is like a you know, small pot. But, but, with the cycle of life and death, which is so, so full of wisdom, with the cycle of life and death, again and again, repeatedly, many plants can be, many seeds can be sown there. Think about the, the generations of human beings who have come and left. Think about all the actions, all the activities that led to them acquire spiritual rewards, spiritual beauties that are going to be blossoming. In the hereafter somewhere Ustad Nursi says you say subhanallah here you eat subhanallah in paradise the, the subhanallah that you utter here glorifying God turns into some kind of paradisical plant or paradisical fruit in the hereafter that you eat how the quidit of what is to come over there, we do not know and we cannot know, but we know that it is to come. So this is the earth. And because this is the earth, because of all these benefits and wisdoms and, and activity and manifestation going on, it is a special place and it can be compared to the heavens. On, the, on a scale, the heavens can be put on one side and the earth can be put on the other. İşte arzın bu azamet-i maneviyesinden ve ehemmiyet-i sanaviyesindendir ki, Kur'an-ı Hakim, semavata nispeten büyük bir ağacın küçük bir meyvesi hükmünde olan arzı, bütün semavata denk tutuyor, onu bir kefede, bütün semavatı bir kefede koyuyor, mükerreren Rabbü semavati vel ard der. It is due to this metaphysical tremendousness and artistic significance of the earth. Metaphysical tremendousness, preciousness, meaningfulness, and art artistic significance. You know, there's, there's a, you, you can make a picture and hang it on the wall, as we mentioned before, and it can stay there for 500 years. Mona Lisa is the Mona Lisa for however many years, right? But, but you can also have a scenery that is equally more beautiful than that picture and is constantly changing. Things are coming and going, different images are appearing and disappearing. And as they appear and disappear, they, this happens, this always happens in harmony. That is the earth, the artistic significance of the earth. It is due to this metaphysical tremendousness and artistic significance of the earth that the wise Qur'an holds the earth, which, compared to the heavens, is in effect a small fruit of a great tree, equal, it, the Qur'an holds it, equal to the heavens. It puts the earth, the Qur'an puts the earth on one side of a scale and the heavens on the other. Repeatedly it says, Rabbu samawati wal ard the Lord of the heavens and the earth. This is how God refers to himself in the Quran again and again, Rabbu samawati wal ard, as if the 
the the the heavens are put on one side of a scale on on one pan of a scale and the earth is put on the other pan and it is in balance now there's a side note in this paragraph but i want to finish and then come back to the side note inshallah hem arzın şu mezkur hikmetlerden neşet eden süratli tahavvülü ve devamlı tagayyuru iktiza eder ki sekenesi de ona göre mazharu tahavvülat olsun moreover the fast transformation and continual transmutation of the earth that issues from these wisdoms that are mentioned that we just talked about above entail that its fruits should also be subject to transformation accordingly. So things here will not be stable. The heavens may be different, as we said at the beginning, right? The the the the um inhabitants of the heavens have stable permanent stations but the things on this earth because of this wisdom of transformation and continual transmutation that renders the the artistry of the earth much superior to that permanent picture in because of its motion and constant constant manifestation of the varieties of different names in different combinations right well its inhabitants then should also be subject to transformation accordingly hem şu mahdud arz hadsiz mucizat-ı kudret-i mazhar olduğundan dır ki en mühim sekeneleri olan ins ve cinnin kuvalarına sair zihayatlar gibi fıtri bir had ve kulki bir kayıt konulmadığı için nihayetsiz terakki ve nihayetsiz tedenniye mazhar olmuşlar. Enbiyadan, evliyadan tutta nemrutlara, ta şeytanlara kadar uzun bir meydan imtihanları peyda olmuştur. Madem öyledir, elbette firavunlaşmış şeytanlar hadsiz şeraretiyle semaya ve ehline taş atacaklar. Moreover, it is because this limited earth is the locus of appearance for boundless miracles of power that the capacities placed in the innate nature and creation of the humans and the jinn as the earth's most important inhabitants have not been limited and thus they are subject to unlimited progress and unlimited regress a long arena of testing has appeared for them beginning with the prophets and saints and extending all the way to the nimruds and satans and nimrud is you know mentioned in the uh, in the quran he was a uh, king a wicked king a satanic king so there will be a long arena of testing and trial that's built here and that's what this earth is remember we said there needs to be progress here why because human beings have the ability to choose good over evil beautiful over ugly true over false we are going to sharpen those skills hone those skills uh, improve those skills here and those who have improved those skills will then end up in paradise where they can choose right or where they can live with the, the the consequence of the choice that they made in this world in constant exposure to absolute good beautiful and true or truth but the testing the separation of those who have those skills and those who do not have those skills those who deserve that exposure and those who do not deserve that exposure is taking place and for this to happen there needs to be a testing and trial a struggle a confrontation since that is the case of course the satans who have become pharaohs will cast stones to the heavens and its inhabitants with their evil doings now of course this is a reference to the verse that we read at the beginning of this uh, uh, treatise right it says bismillahir rahmanir rahim wa laqad zayyanna samaa ad-dunya bi masabiha wa ja'alnaha rujuman lish-shayatin we have adorned the lowest heaven with lamps and made them missiles for stoning satans now this verse is usually interpreted as uh, you know stars 
or comets, the you know, the the the you know, pieces of uh, heavenly objects moving on the heavens being cast on the satans and jinns so that they cannot go above uh, into the heavens beyond a certain uh, layer and you know based on prophetic traditions we also know that there were a lot of shooting stars when the prophet wasallam was born and that is understood to be the the jinn the evil jinn being chased out of the heavens to earth and they cannot go above a certain layer ever since and this is valid and later in the seventh step Ustad Nursi is going to provide this interpretation too but a subtle indication in the verse is also that lishayatin you know can be read as uh, against satans for stoning satans or as stones for satans so it is a again a subtle indication that the the satans here on earth the evil doers evil doing satans on this earth are so vengeful and and and so enraged against the beautiful stable um you know good creatures of the the heavens that even though they cannot reach they may be you know shooting their evils like stones up into the heavens they cannot do anything they cannot hurt them they cannot harm them they are lowly stuck on this earth but it is a manifestation of their rage against good that they are shooting their evils it may be they're casting their sight they might be shooting other things so there's a subtle indication to this in the verse 2 mashallah and Ustad Nursi uh, pulls it out for us now this is the end of the step but as I said there was a uh, side note and I want to read that too before we conclude inshallah Hashiye. evet küreyi arz küçüklüğüyle beraber semavata karşı gelebilir çünkü nasıl ki daimi bir çeşme varidatsız büyük bir gölden daha büyük denilebilir hem bir ölçekle bir şey ölçerek başka yere nakledilen ve onun elinden geçmiş ve ona girmiş çıkmış bir mahsulatla zahiren binler defa ölçekten büyük ve dağ gibi bir cisimle o ölçek muvazeneye çıkabilir aynen öyle de küreyi arz Cenab-ı Hak onu sanatına bir meşher ve icadına bir mahşer ve hikmetine medar ve kudretine mazhar ve rahmetine mezher ve cennetine mezra ve hadsiz kainata ve mahlukat mahlukat alemlerine ölçek ve mazi denizlerine ve gayb alemine akacak bir çeşme hükmünde icat etmiş. Her sene kat kat ve katmerli yüz bin tarzda masnuattan dokunmuş gömleklerini değiştirdiği ve çok defa dolup maziye boşaltarak gayb alemine döktüğü bütün o müteceddid alemleri ve arzın müteaddid gömleklerini nazara al. Yani bütün mazisini hazır, hazır farz et, sonra yeknesak ve bir derece basit semavata karşı muvazene et, göreceksin ki arz diğer de gelmezse noksan da kalmaz işte rabbus semavat vel ard sırrını anla now this is about uh, what we mentioned above uh, the the quranic phrase uh, reference to the lord of the heavens and the earth rabbus semavati vel ard the lord of the heavens and the earth right how can the heavens and the earth be held equivalent to one another side note yes the globe of the earth can correspond to the heavens despite its smallness because as a continually flowing fountain can be considered to be bigger than a lake without any inflowing water but when i was in um, you know school we would have these uh, problems so there's a pool the pool is so big and there is a tap which uh, from which let's say nine liters of water uh, flows every minute how many minutes does it take for the pool to fill eventually it's going to f to fill because the fountain is constantly flowing it doesn't matter how big the, the uh, pool is as long as the fountain does not stop the water continues to flow at some point it's going to fall it, it, it is going to fill that is how the earth is 
it is like a ever flowing fountain a continually flowing fountain right the amount of water that comes out of it in the long run can be bigger than a lake without any inflowing water or another example with the produce that has entered it and exited and thus passed through it a measuring container so imagine a measuring container with the produce that has entered it and exited and thus passed through it a measuring container used to measure something to transfer to another place can appear in balance with a mountain-like object that is thousands of times bigger than it in appearance the same idea with the fountain and the lake now in the same way the sublime real god has created the globe of the earth in effect as a display house for his artistry a place of assembly for what he brings into existence a locus of concentration for his wisdom a locus of concentration for his wisdom where his wisdom appears and takes place a lot or where the consequences of his wisdom take place a locus of appearance for his power a flower bed for his mercy a cultivating field for his paradise a measuring container for the boundless cosmos and realms of creatures and a fountain flowing into the seas of the past and the realm of the unseen in the future take into consideration all those ever renewing realms that he pours into the realm of the unseen so things that happen do they disappear no they are poured into the realm of the unseen their products their images they the, the values that are produced uh, from them the meanings that they produce the beauty that they produce right they they all are poured into the realm of the unseen take into consideration all those ever renewing realms every moment the entire universe is a realm take into consideration consideration all those ever renewing realms and the realm of the universe out there is not changing as fast but the earth is ever changing take into consideration all those ever renewing realms of the earth that he pours into the realm of the unseen by changing their layered and multiple layers of shirts woven in a hundred thousand ways from the artifacts imagine the earth wearing a shirt say in winter the white shirt and then changing it into this colorful flowery beautiful shirt in the spring and then becomes yellow at harvest time in, in in the summer reds and yellows and you know constantly changing shirts it wears one shirt takes a picture puts another one takes another picture puts another one takes another picture by changing their layered and multiple layers of shirts woven in a hundred thousand ways from the artifacts artifacts everything that's created on the earth and by depositing them into the past and the earth's various shirts take into consideration all those different shirts that the earth wears at any given time that is assume assume its entire past to be present all those pictures that were taken throughout its existence put them all together in front of you then compare it with the heavens which are to some extent monotonous and plain you will see that even if the earth is not more it will not be less either so understand the secret of rabbu samawati wal ard the lord of the heavens and the earth alhamdulillah this was the end of the third step in the 15th word inshallah in the next episode we will continue with the fourth fifth uh, ramadan is coming if this finishes by ramadan we will finish if not inshallah we will give a break and uh, stad nursi has a beautiful treatise on ramadan and fasting and gratitude inshallah we will read that during this ramadan if the 15th word does not finish by that point we will come back to it and finish after ramadan bitawik if god gives us success inshallah subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma 'allamtana innaka antal alimul hakim wa akhir da'wahu man alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin al fatiha allahumma salli